You blink. Okay, so today we're gonna start graphs. Okay, we are going to start our graphs today. I need you all to get out your like weekly challenge packets, the ones with all the graphs on them. And I need you to do that first one as you're due now. Okay, so it talks about it says that a geo chart is a tool used to visualize data on a map. The size of the circular marker indicates a value. Large circles correspond to large amounts and smaller circles to smaller amounts. This geo chart tracks the number of cases of skin cancer diagnosed per year in nine Australian cities. Okay, so you are going to take that information on your little chart. You're going to answer two questions for me. One, what conclusions can you make from examining the geo chart? And two, according to the geo chart, is a resident of a coastal city or a resident of an inland city more likely to develop skin cancer? Okay, so you all are gonna have five minutes to answer that. I'm gonna take attendance, go over all that good stuff, and then I'll walk around if you have any questions and then we'll go over it, okay? Get okay, started. Bless you. Okay, so what are we thinking? One, what's a class that we think would be really useful to use geo charts in? Raise your hand for me. What's one class that we think would be really useful to use geo charts in? Chase? Social studies. Social studies, right? We look at a lot of maps. We look at how people move to different places. So what can we tell from just examining, examining this, looking at our chart in general. Blake, go ahead, and then Isaiah, go after. Uh, the bigger the glass, the more stick is in that spot. Okay, yes, but what does that mean on our map? Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of on the edges of it. The edges, okay, so what would we call those edges? What do we think, like this is a map, right? This is our country, it's Australia. What's around the edges? What's like the outside part? Haley. The coast, right? This is the ocean. 
So all of these places are the coast, right? What do we have at the coast? Chase, beaches. Beaches, right? Okay, so our big idea, our conclusion that we can draw from this is that there are more cases of skin cancer around the outside, okay, of our graph. Okay, so according to our geo chart, is a resident of a coastal city or a resident of an inland city more likely to develop skin cancer? What can we, we essentially just answered it, but what can we say, Isaiah? Coastal city. Coastal city, okay. What do we think, why do we think that might be? Yeah. People would like to go outside more. People might like to go outside more, right? There might be more activities to do outside. What else is at the coast usually? Blake? On the beach, it doesn't like the sun has to do skin cancer. Yeah, the sun has everything to do with skin cancer, so yes. Right? We might be exposed to more sun, we might not be as covered up, we might, we might be doing more outdoor activities, all of those good things, right? Sometimes when we go to the beach, we forget how much time has passed, and we forget to reapply more sunscreen, all those good things. Does this make sense to everybody? Yes. Okay, so, moving forward, our little agenda for today, we have our do now, obviously this is our agenda, and then we'll go over our learning target, then we're gonna go over some vocabulary, and we're gonna focus today mostly on scatter plots. Um, and then you all are gonna have a little bit of practice work and then we'll do our exit chicken. So our learning target for today, somebody read my we will. Gag, go ahead for our we will. We will classify scatter plots based on sizes of correlation. Correlation. Correlation, perfect. Hey, the reader, I can. I can identify the key components of a scatter plot. Beautiful, okay. Our driving question is how do I create a graph using collected data? So a lot of times we look at data, but we don't necessarily know what to do with it. Or if we just have a bunch of lists of numbers, we don't know how to like make sense of that. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take those lists of numbers and we're gonna put them on a graph. So it's easier for us to understand and analyze our data. Okay, so our graph vocabulary, our first word is scatter plot. So on your key vocabulary sheet, on your daily packet, your first one up there is scatter plot. Okay, so a scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two sets of data. Okay, so sometimes we just look at one set of data, but with scatter plots, we're looking at two variables. Okay, so maybe height and weight, maybe um, the, uh, like temperature and sales of something else. Okay, those are all things that we potentially could look at. There are tons of things that you can use scatter plots for, um, but those are just two examples. I'm gonna give you all about one minute to get this written down, and then we will move forward. Okay. So you all should be on your key vocabulary sheets. Should all be on the front. You should all be writing down scatter plot. What is a scatter plot? that shows the relationships between two sets of data. Scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationships between two sets of data. Does anybody need more time? No, you're good. Flip up again. What? Um, no, no, no. Okay, so correlation. A correlation is the type of relationships between two sets of data. We've talked about correlations a little bit before, but now we're gonna look at specifically the three types and how like we use those when we're looking at scatter plots, okay? So correlations help us analyze our data. Okay, so it's the type of relationship between two sets of data. What kind of correlations do we think we could maybe have? What are some examples of some types of correlation? What do we think we could maybe have a type of correlation? What kind of correlation do we maybe have? Kayla, go ahead. Okay, yes. The little too specific, think a little bigger though. Okay, like correlations, like types of correlations, okay? Like are they going up? Are they going down? What's another way that we can say that? Like uh, 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 
positive, is it positive and negative? Positive and negative, perfect. Okay, so positive and negative. I mean, all good, just need to read any more time. Okay, so positive and negative are gonna be our two main types. A positive correlation means that as one set of values increases, the other set is also going to tend to increase. Okay, so as our x increases, our y is also going to increase. Okay, as our x increases, our y is also going to tend to increase. Okay, so our next one is a negative correlation. So when we're looking at negative correlations, we're going to look at as one set of values increases, the other set is going to decrease, okay? So as one goes up, the other is going to go down. They're not friends. They want to be away from each other. Okay, with positive correlations, with positive correlations, they're besties. They're going to go together the entire time, okay? But with negative correlations, as one goes up, the other is going down, and then vice versa, okay? So negative is opposite to positive. Sometimes you can look at positive as going up the hill. Okay, we're going up. Negative correlation, we're going down the hill. definition this is the last one I know it seems super long it's our last one I promise okay this is line of best fit or trend line sometimes you'll see either one used they essentially mean the same thing um, but on a line a line pause a line of best fit is a line on a scatter plot that shows us the general direction that a group of points seems to be heading so it helps us analyze it okay so when we use a scatter plot it will add a line of best fit so it can help us see the direction that our trend is going. Okay, sometimes they're really nice and grouped together, our dots are, so it's really easy to tell the trend. Sometimes they're a little more spread out, so it can be difficult to tell if there is a trend at all. Okay, I know this one's a little long. This is our last one though. Blake, what's up? So there's no correlation, so it's, it's, it's like now a uh, line of best fit. Yeah, exactly. So if we have no correlation, we will not have a line of best fit. Okay, because there is no trend for us to follow, so we wouldn't be able to insert a line. That was perfectly. Okay, so our line of best fit, our trend line, we're only going to see this with positive or negative correlations. Yes, she's going. Oh, actually, she's done. Go ahead. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you all about 15 more seconds to wrap this one up and then we will move forward. Okay. Okay, so our next little activity, if you flip your page on your key vocabulary sheet, you will see three boxes. One for negative correlation, one for positive, and one for no correlation at all. Okay, so we have one for negative, one for positive, and then one for no correlation.
the number of CDs sold and the number of candy bars sold. Okay, those two don't really have a relationship together. We can't say if one person buys three candy bars that they're automatically going to buy four CDs. Okay, so they don't have a relationship. There's no like rhyme or reason with it. There's no cause and effect. They're just kind of sets of data that you could maybe graph together, but they don't really go together, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work on some scatter plots together, and then you all are gonna do some with your partner. If we don't have time to do the partner work today, that is okay, don't stress about it. Um, but what we are going to do is we'll just work on that tomorrow, okay? So when anytime you're making a scatter plot, the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you have your table with all of your chart to chart your data, okay? So if you're collecting the data on your own, you need to have a nice little format for you to put all of that in so it's nice and organized and you know what two sets go together. Okay, so using a coordinate grid to plot your data plots, make sure you label your X and your Y axis, okay? So remember your Y axis is always the one that goes up and down, okay? When you have questions, when you ask why, you raise your hand. Right, your hand is straight up, the y-axis goes straight up and down. Okay, and then the x is obviously the opposite of that. So, you need to make sure that you draw, you go in, you plot all of your points, you draw a straight line, um, trend as close as possible. You need to make sure that you go through about two numbers. You wanna make sure that you have stuff on both sides. Okay, so we're gonna look at height and weight. Okay, we talked about it a little bit earlier. What do we just say height and weight usually is? What kind of correlation do we just say it usually is? Like positive correlation. Positive correlation, good. Okay. So where are we looking? We have different heights in inches, and our weight is also in pounds. Okay, so we have three titles, we have three labels on this chart. It is super important when you are graphing that you always, always, always include your three titles. Okay? If you don't include those titles and somebody else reads your data, they're going to be like, I have no idea what any of this is. So you don't know what something's being measured in. You don't know what we're even looking at. Okay, so what is our overall title for this chart, this data set right here? Somebody I have not heard from yet. Aisha. Yep, our weight and our height of our basketball team. Okay, and then we have our height in inches and again our weight and pounds. So we have all three of our data sets. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that and we're going to plot it. Okay, so again, first thing you need to add up here is your title. So we're doing our weight. You all don't have this on yours, just like, we're just going over the basics really quick. I'm saying people, team. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Chase. Um, it said that the guy was 67 inches tall, so um, he's six foot four and weighed 160 pounds. So that, that's not right. Um, I don't know where this data was taken from, so I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I don't know their jeans. I don't know their makeup. Go like a sir. Okay, he is kind of built pretty lanky. Okay, so there's that. Next, we're going to include our X and our Y titles. Okay, so what do we think our Y title would be? What do we think our Y title could be? Blake. Uh, weight. Weight, perfect, okay. So here's our weight. We're including our title and we're including our unit. Right, we always need to include our unit as well. And then across the bottom, we're including our other, which is height. And our height is also being measured, or being measured in inches, okay? So, here's this. Does this make sense to everybody where we got all of this information? Okay, I know this seems really basic, but graphing is something that can be difficult. Okay, we're not gonna be able to run away from graphing. Like, you're gonna have to deal with graphing, you're gonna have to deal with data, in any career you go into in the future. Okay, so we need to make sure we understand these basics because these are skills that you're always going to use. Chase, please keep your hands to yourself. Okay? So, going forward, we start to chart all of our dots, right? What's our first data set? What's our first data set? Look at your chart on your paper. It says weight and our basketball team. What's our first data set? Mariana, what's our first two numbers? Mm -hmm. uh, 
right? Okay, so our numbers as we're going up, all of these are ones, okay? So our height, or, or yeah, our height, and inches are all whole numbers going up by one each on the line. So we don't have to estimate that. Our weight though, because we have to go, our range is from like 120 to 200, we have to kind of space them out easier. Okay, because if we, we don't have 80 lines to show all of this, and if we spaced it out by 80, our information would be way too spread out for us to be able to kind of make sense of all of our data together. So these are in between, are going up by tens. So we do have to kind of estimate where our weight is going to be. So we went over to 63 and it's about 124, so it's like right here in the middle. Okay, what's our next data set? Okay. Okay, perfect. See, we go over to 68. We know that 168 is between 160 and 170, but closer to 170, so we put our dot in right there. What's our next one? Aisha. Uh, 170 what? 177. 177, perfect. Okay, so same thing. We go over to 67. You know that 177 is in between 170 and 180, so we go up to here. Okay? Does this make sense where we're getting this data from for our chart? Yes? Okay, perfect. Okay, so making sense of what our data means, you all have to fill in the links on this. Okay, but it says according to our data, we can see a positive correlation. Does that make sense? Okay, and with our positive correlation, what does that mean? Like, yeah, okay. No, 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 that's perfect. You can say either or. You don't have to put one first or the other first. Because they're both increasing, okay? So our height is increasing and our weight is increasing too. We can use our data in our scatter plot to make future predictions about height and weight. For example, a basketball player who is 65 inches tall, using our trend line, okay, whenever we go over to 65 inches, we can go up to our trend line and see or estimate, guess, where his weight potentially could be. And from there, we can make a range. Usually with our ranges, we like to go 10 above and 10 below. It just kind of depends on the kind of data you're collecting, um, but roughly 140 to 160 pounds, okay? So we took this data, that was just essentially just a bunch of random numbers at first. We like that out on our graph, and then we analyzed it, okay? Does this make a little more sense now? Yeah, scatterplots aren't as scary, right? Okay. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to work with you all. We're going to do the beginning part together, and then you are going to work with your table partner to graph the rest of our spots, okay? So you all are going to work with your table partners to graph the rest of your materials. Chase, I promise I will get you a table partner. Calm down. Yeah. Okay. So, first thing we need to do is we need to circle the highest temperature. What's our highest temperature we see here? What's our greatest temperature we see here? Leo. 77. So we're circling our highest temperature. Okay, we're going to box in our lowest temperature. What is our lowest temperature? Ishmael. 57, okay. Why would it be useful for us to circle our highest and box in our lowest? Haley. So we don't get them confused, but what else would it be useful for when we're making our actual graph? Like? Just to know a range. Our range, right? We want to know how big our range needs to be. Okay, we have to have some idea of what all we need to include in our chart, okay? And then it says we need to circle our highest sales. What's our highest sales number? Oh. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, 544. Mm, try it again. Yeah, Van, what is it? 614. 614, good. Okay, what's our lowest sales? Party. But yes, great, perfect, 203. Okay, so these are our two ranges. We have our ranges for our X and for our Y. Okay, this is all of our goods. Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So everybody has that on their paper. What we are going to do now is together, we're gonna go through, put all of our labels on, put all of our numbers together. 
we are going to graph our first dot, and then you with your partner are going to graph the rest of our dots. Okay? Does this make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, I forgot I don't have that one. So, we have our little chart right here. Okay. Our data, what kind of data are we looking at here? What do we think this data could be about? Isaiah, what are we hanging? Okay, right, we're looking at temperature and we're looking at ice cream sales. So something we could potentially analyze or something we could potentially look at is how temperature affects our ice cream sales. So that should be everybody's title across the top, right? So how temperature, I'm just gonna put temp, affects ice cream sales. Okay. So this is our top. This is our across the top. Okay. Okay. So next we have to label our X and our Y. Okay, so we are going to put ice cream sales along our y-axis, okay? So we need to label it and we also need to have a unit with it. So what could our label be? What could our label be? Sammy, what do you think our label could be? What do you, okay, so we're looking at ice cream sales and we're looking at temperature. We're putting sales on the side, what are we selling? Ice cream, right? So we could just put ice cream sales on the side. Okay. And then what are we measuring our ice cream sales? Like how are we measuring that? Are we measuring it in euros? Are we measuring it in pounds? Are we measuring it in nickels? Michael, what are we measuring that in? Dollars, right? Okay, so make sure you put your little dollar sign in there. Okay. Okay, if ice cream sales is going across our y-axis, what would have to go across our x-axis? Yeah. Temperature. Temperature. What are we measuring temperature in? What are we measuring temperature in? Mm, what do you see? Make sure whenever you all are looking for your labels, look at your chart. Usually your chart will include it for you. Haley, what are we measuring that in? Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Perfect. So we're going to put our F right there. Okay. So... We have a pretty big range for our money and for our temperatures, right? We're going all the way from $203 up to $650, okay? We don't have that like much room to do that, right? So it's not like we can go up by ones, we can't go up by tens. Okay, what could be another group, another number that we could go up by? Mm, higher than 10. Wait, or Isaiah, what do you think? 50. 50, right? Okay, what would be, what would have to be our first number? Haley. 200. 200, right? Why 200? Isaiah. Because it's the lowest sale. 200 is our lowest sale or 203 is our lowest sale? 203. 203, right? But we want to go to 200, so we have a nice number. So start our range. Okay, so we're going to start at 200. And then, like Isaiah said, we're going to go up by 50s. The entire way okay what is going to be our top number what are we going to stop at what do we think we're going to stop at Aisha what do you think 600, 600? Mm, is that our high what's our highest money sale 614. so is 614 higher than 600 no. so what, what's our next one up that we can stop at we're going up by 50. 650, perfect, okay. Okay, and then temperature, I'm gonna give you all a second to get that down.
highest temperature? Michael, what's our highest temperature? 77, okay? So we have to go from 57 all the way up to 77. We might have to add a few lines into your graph, but what are, what are we thinking? How do we think we could go up? Michael, by twos, okay? I agree with that. What would have to be our first start? We wanna go up by twos and we wanna make it simple. What would be our first start? Blake. Five, maybe? Mm, go up one. Six. 56, right? It's easy. When we have even numbers, it's easier to count by twos, right? Okay, so we're going to start at 56, and then we're going to go all the way up to 78. Okay, so we have 56, 58, 60, 62, and go on, and so forth. as you can. You want to spread it out as much as you can while still like making sure you're not wasting space. Okay, so that's why it's really important to figure out what your range is and try to stay to your range so you're utilizing that space as best as possible. Okay, so we're going to go through, we're going to graph two dots together and then you and your partner are going to work on the rest of them, okay? So first, our, what's our first data set? What are our first two numbers? Somebody look at their chart. Okay, so what are our first two data sets? What's our first temperature? 58, and how much money did we make that day? 215, okay, so we're going to start on our temperature side. We're going to 258. Okay, we do not have to guess where 58 is because it's on a line. Okay, so we go to 58. 215 is between what two numbers that we have marked out on our chart? Van. 200 and 250. 200 and 250. Should 215 be closer to 200 or to 250? 200, right? So we can kind of take a little estimate and say that our first dot could be there. Does that make sense? How we got that spot right there? Yes. Okay, we're going to do two more together. What is our next set of data points? Isaiah. Right, okay, so we're going over to 62. Where, what is 325 in between? Kaylee? 350. Perfect, so we're going to just this, and it's essentially right in the middle of it, so we can go right there, okay? Our third data set is also our lowest data set. Kaylee, do you want to come photograph it? No, okay, we're not that confident yet. Does anybody want to try? Like, come here. I have faith in you. You're going to do your the third data set, okay? So 57 and 203. You got it. You just put your dot where you think that would go. 57 and 203. That's perfect. You're perfect. That's beautiful. Thank you, sir. Okay, so we know that 57 is in between 56 and 58, right? And then 203 is essentially right at 200 in our big team of things. So that's how we got our little spot right there. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna give you all about five minutes to go through and do your data sets on your own. Okay, with your table partner. Whatever you don't get done, it's okay. We will review this tomorrow. And then after that, we're going to do our exit ticket, okay? So work with your partner to graph the rest of these spots. Okay, work with your partner to graph the rest of these spots. You all can talk. I need y'all at like a level one. Okay, so I shouldn't be able to hear your conversation, so you all can talk to your partner. Work through it together. Okay? Okay? So you all are working with your partner, like giving you an opportunity to talk to each other. So please talk to each other. Curve, do you need a new pencil? Bourbon, sorry, come here.
face. Turn around and work with Van. Chase, turn around and work with Van. Gad, I don't know why you're on an iPad right now. I don't know why you're not on an iPad right now. So please put it away. Put it away. Okay, work with your partners. Figure out where all of your spots need to go. Okay, how are you feeling? Good, awesome. Y'all can graph in your sleep now? Yeah. Okay. Do we need more time or can we put the rest of our dots up here? A little bit more time? Okay. Y'all are good. Perfect, beautiful graph. Oh, well, beautiful graph. Oh. Blake, that is a beautiful graph. Yeah. Thank you. Right 
Do we feel good? Do we feel like we have to do the last two? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and go forward to our exit ticket. We're going to analyze our data tomorrow and go over the rest of our packet, okay? So there's another graphing activity for you all to get a little more practice with scatter plots. And we're going to analyze this tomorrow. I need you all to go to your last page of this packet. Okay, it says creating a graph exit ticket. Okay. You all have four questions. That is it. I need you all to answer these four questions. Once you're done with your exit ticket, I need you all to close both of them up. And I need you to put your graph packet on top of your vocab packet, okay? I've not decided if y'all are picking them up or if I'll just pick them up after. So go ahead and get started on that exit ticket for me. Okay, you all can use your notes. You all have notes with you. Okay, so that was just a warning bell that you all have time. About two minutes. Remember, when you're done, make sure that your graph packet goes on top. Remember that your graph packet goes on top of your key vocabulary packet. Okay. You all just try your best. If you aren't done completely with your graph, don't worry about it. We'll fix it tomorrow. But 